Well, good evening. And uh, I'm John Hager, Chairman of the Board. And on behalf of our Board of Directors, I want to welcome you to the great celebration of our annual gala for the Sorensen Institute. We're pleased you're here. You're all here, board members, sponsors, supporters, alumni, class members, other interested individuals. Uh, your being here means so much. And while we're housed at the University of Virginia, Sorensen really is self-funded through tuition and through contributions and grants from individuals, corporations, and foundations, and endowment income. So obviously, your help is appreciated, and it's just great that you're here tonight. This is our 20th anniversary year. Last year, we were honored by the presence of all nine living Virginia governors. We may be unique in that regard, and we celebrated them with great vigor and appreciate them being here. This year, we're honoring Virginia's lieutenant governors and attorney generals, some of whom became governor and many of whom did not. <laughs> but a really distinguished group of fantastic public servants who will be recognized by Bob after dinner. And we thank all of those who are present tonight for being here. You know, the mission of Sorensen is very straightforward, to improve governance at the local, state, and federal level of government through developing individual leaders. The process of Sorensen is very simple. Programs are designed to focus on public policy, ethics, and getting things done through bipartisanship. There's a heavy dose of geographical exposure around the Commonwealth, practical politics, and learning about who you are and what you believe in. Talent and character through trust, ability, and respect. The success of Sorensen is demonstrable. With some 1,500 graduates over our 20 years, from multiple programs, currently 22 alumni serving in the Virginia General Assembly, two in Congress, and over 150 at local levels throughout the Commonwealth in a variety of positions, making a difference for governance in Virginia. So thank you again for your support, and it's now my pleasure to introduce John Thomas of the Weldon Cooper Center at the University of Virginia, their executive director, who will bring us a special presentation. John. Thank you, Bob. I'm really pleased tonight to have the opportunity to be one of two to represent lieutenant governors in Virginia, all 39 of them dating back to 1852, from Shelton Lake to our own Bill Bowling. <laughs> Actually, the office can be traced further back to the Virginia Council of London in the early 1600s. Later, after the council dissolved, the king appointed the governor. The governor would then form a governor's council from which a member would be designated deputy to serve as lieutenant governor. The titular governors were frequently absent for prolonged periods, and in some instances, the titular governors never actually came to Virginia. Consequently, the conduct of the governor was left in the hands of the lieutenant governor. Oh well, those were the days. <laughs> lieutenant governors are known for bringing stability and continuity to the executive branch. Back in 2010, the Center for Politics conducted a national study, and the esteemed Larry Sabato concluded it's twice as good to be a lieutenant governor. For nationally, they had a success rate twice as high as attorney generals at becoming governor. But of course, Virginia is different. 
Only seven lieutenant governors have become governor of Virginia. And uh, Tim, Chuck, uh, we, we really uh, admire you. Uh, we don't live up to the national pace, and we need to get with it. Right, Bill? <laughs> when I had the privilege to begin to serve as lieutenant governor in 1998, I set out to redefine the role in addition to the constitutional duties and the code provisions of the boards and commissions and councils to serve on, I traveled widely and participated broadly across the Commonwealth. As my reward, the Washington Post editorialized, indeed, I would tend the opening of a can of sardines. <laughs> Big compliment coming from the Post. Our Transportation Policy Commission in 2002 deliberated at length, produced a substantive report, and I'm pleased to say they just changed the date this year to pass it in the General Assembly. Took, took 11 years. Notwithstanding Jeff Shapiro's definition of the Office of Lieutenant Governor, there came a time when all bets were off. That was 9-11, 2011 a day that will live in infamy. Governor Gilmore's job and my job suddenly, in the course of one morning, became full-time Homeland Security, which had not even been defined at the time. I was on the way to Washington that morning, and after being called on the phone, returned immediately to the Capitol, in fact, beat the governor to the Capitol. It was all hands on deck heavy emphasis on getting along. Uh, coordination, communication, cooperation were the watchwords of the day. And late that morning after the second press conference we had had, we sat together to discuss a requested list of Virginia's 10 most visible and vulnerable sites. Yes, indeed, the state capitol would be on that list. And we totally forgot that we were sitting on the third floor of the state capitol at the time. It shows how the thinking has changed so much. Well, I stayed at it for almost four years and am proud of all that was accomplished in Virginia under two governors, much of which is in place still today. After 9-11, the police began talking to the firemen and the emergency responders. The counties began talking to the cities. Virginia actually talked to Maryland. We both communicated with the federal government. Local government worked with the state, et cetera, et cetera. And so as we say at Sorensen, trust, civility, and respect really does work. So let's keep it up. Thank you so very much. Enjoy these remem reminiscences.